Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors, and I want to talk to you today about overdrive gearboxes. I've got here a Teal Blue 73 MGB. This thing freewheels in reverse. You try to back it up, it spins, it freewheels, got a sort of a gnashing noise. Another, another way that this evidences itself, this particular problem, is when you're running on the expressway at 60 miles an hour and you take your foot off the gas, the engine RPM falls down to nearly idle, and yet you're still doing 60. So you put your foot into the throttle, the RPMs come up, and all of a sudden it catches and take, takes off again. So these are two particular problems, and this is because the overdrive is caught, not all the way engaged and not all the way disengaged. And we're just running off the sprag clutch on the inside. I'm going to put this up in the air, we're going to drain it, we're going to take it apart and show you what, what to do. Alright, so the first thing we got to do is drain the gearbox because we're going to take the overdrive apart and if, we, if we're not careful we'll get a face full of oil. You can do this, you don't have to have it on the hoist, um, you don't have to have it on the hoist, but you do have to drain, drain the gearbox. The next thing we'll take off is the filter on the overdrive. Alright, now that we've drained the main gearbox, and that was with an 11 sixteenths socket, we've got a 5 sixteenths socket here, and we're going to take the oil filter housing off. Remember that this really isn't 5 sixteenths, this is 2BA, but uh, 5 sixteenths fortunately works real nicely. I'm going to have this guy off here in just a minute, and uh, it'll, start to, it'll start to ooze some oil here as it gets loose because even though we've drained the main box there still is a lot of oil left here in the gearbox in the uh, overdrive unit so we'll take him off here these are pretty long screws get this guy up here and uh, usually it starts to leak but this is, this is a testimony to why when you're reinstalling this, you only use grease on the filter. You never use silicone sealant. Because if you use silicone sealant, not only can it get sucked up into the overdrive unit and cause it to fail, but the next time you go to take the uh, filter screen off, it won't come off. So it is essential that when you're fitting this, this filter, that... Uh, that you use only grease. Well, we're going to be going to have this apart here in just a second, and then we're going to grab a screwdriver and move this filter housing just a little bit here. Kind of difficult to get to and everything. I'm going to dance away for a second and grab my grab my uh, screwdriver, and uh, then we'll be right back here. Get ready for the splash. Oh, here we go. So, so here, here's our, here's our housing here with the, with the magnets in the bottom. You can see the magnets in the bottom of here, and here's our filter screen on top of here, which uh, should come off just effortlessly because it's only on with grease. There we go. Here's the filter screen, and there's nothing caught in the filter screen. Well, there's always a couple little particulates, but particles are caught there on the on the screen. But it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna clean these so up. Here we are at the safety clean tank, and we're gonna clean this off here. Also in the safety clean tank today is the idler from uh, an idler from a Nash Metropolitan. You know, we we uh, we see those on occasion. So anyway, we'll get the filter screen here nice and clean, the outside nice and clean. And we'll go back over and uh, blow these off. Cleanliness is next to godliness in this stuff. So I, I love I love taking these. Uh, here's carburetor cleaner. I love carburetor cleaner. I love compressed air. I like getting this stuff like really, really, really clean. So all the swarf and all the all the stuff is off the inside here. We can see, if Brooks can come in here closely, you can see the, the dirt in there. But uh, we're just about we're just about done. This guy's really clean. Then I also I'm gonna clean the uh, the screws. Well I'll try to in any way. 
and all this stuff I like to have laid out very, very carefully on the, uh, on the bench. I see there are telltale signs of si silicone here. S somebody's put this together with some silicone and we're going to work real diligently in getting that off. That might be our problem that some of that silicone worked itself up into the hydraulic circuit. So that's why you only use grease. In just a minute we're going to go ahead and take apart some more of the bottom of that uh, overdrive unit. So the first thing we're going to do here is take out our oil pressure relief valve. This is a, this is a, a three quarter inch socket. It's just a cap. There's no springs or balls behind it. Well there are but they're not going to pop out. So we're going to take off our, our uh, guy here and then I'm going to use a hook. I've got a scribe here with a hook in it. I'm going to go up inside here and find hook, hook on to the uh, valve and pull the valve out. So here, here's, the, here's the valve here and we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead over on the bench and clean this stuff up. Here's our oil pressure relief valve. This is the low pressure relief valve at the top of the unit. The spring that actually forces the, the valve down into the housing. The filter screen at the bottom. The washer that was at the bottom and then the plug that goes here uh, at the very base and holds it all together. Now when we took this apart we found that this housing was crushed just a little bit right here and we found that the filter sc screen the filter screen, look at this, it's all foobarred. I mean, this, this isn't foobarred, this is fubbed. Anyway, I happen to have another one here that's a whole lot nicer, which we'll use. Also, notice that the, the copper washer that goes at the bottom, that's, that's a gargantuan and all eaten up. So I'm gonna use a proper one uh, down here. Again, it's important to clean up each of these individual pieces. You know, just sort of draw nice and, and it's especially important that the um, that this valve fits in here with no galling at all that it's absolutely free to move and I feel just a little bit of a sort of a chunky in there so I'm going to take some paper here some 600 paper and just smooth out my valve again I love compressed air so I'm going to clean up And our valve ought to fit back. Oh, he's nice and smooth. Our, our new filter screen fits on here. Just ducky. We're not going to change the O-rings today because we the owner had just changed them, and I can take a look at them here, and they look just fine. But it's going to take some fiddling here to get this uh, used filter screen onto here correctly. But we do want to do that so that it fits better than the old one did because the old one you know, we'll keep trying here and then we're finally gonna say oh I'm gonna turn off the camera and uh, and do it uh, at my leisure and then we'll show it to you when it's completed so anyway I, I'll, I'll do that our, our spring goes on top of here our valve goes on top of here and I, I'm gonna have to this is crushed here a little bit I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and bend this out so it's a you know, it fits a little more carefully We'll come back to this. I'll show you a picture of it once it's all assembled correctly. Well, now that I made my filter screen fit on the bottom with some difficulty, our valve goes in, our sleeve, our heavy spring, and our low oil pressure relief. Here's the whole assembly here, and it's all set to re reassemble. Now we're going to go ahead and take the, um, take the solenoid out.